Hi, my loves. Welcome back to the Stars Cartel channel. If you don't know, I'm Star. Y'all, I'm here with a song. This song been in my head, I would say, for about an hour since I woke up. I woke up about an hour ago. And it's just, I gotta get up early in the morning and find me another lover. I gotta get up early in the morning. Anywho, this song is by the Gap Band. One of the greatest bands of all time. But this is by the Gap Band. And, um, let me see. I'm gonna go through the lyrics a little bit. I never really um, deciphered through the lyrics of this song. I'm not sure if I perceived it before. If I did, 9 out of 10, I just went over what I received. But today I'm being led. I like actually typed in the, you know, the lyrics and pulled up the song. So, oh, I never, you know, I loved you till you left me. Oh, I never, you cared. Oh, I never, you know, I cared till you were gone. I was young and foolish. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know I lost you till you were gone. Oh, I never knew I loved you till you were gone. So I got to get up early in the morning to find me another lover. I got to get up early in the morning to find me another lover. Okay, I will skip over that point. Okay, so they say, gotta make up for the lesson I've learned. Gotta find me a lover that won't run for cover. Gotta find me a lover that won't run for the mother. Um, I was young and foolish. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know I lost you till you were gone. She had a pretty face that drove me wild. I even wanted her to have my child. Early in the morning to find me another lover. And then the only other part that I see that's different is late at night, baby. Everything will be at right. Will be all right. Okay. So let me look at let me let me find a scripture for this here to decipher what this person is trying to say, what they feel it is. The scripture comes from Jeremiah 8 and 4. Tell them, thus says the Lord, when someone falls, does he not rise again? If he goes astray, does he not turn back? Why do these people rebel with obstinate resistance? Why do they cling to deceptive idols, refuse to turn back? I listen closely. They speak what is not true. No one repents of his wickedness, saying, what have I done? Everyone keeps on running his course like a steel dashing into battle. Mm. Even the stork in the air knows its seasons. Turtle dove, swallow, and thrush observe their time of return. But my people do not know the ordinance of the Lord. Baby, so here's the message. So for somebody, okay, for somebody, for somebody, for somebody, for somebody, for somebody, God has called for there to be a reconciliation. God has called for you and your spouse. Like, y'all are supposed to be together. It's not a situation where y'all not. And that would explain why they felt the way they did and why they, why they felt these strong feelings towards you. Oh, here's the thing, okay? Whatever it is that they was doing, just like in the lyrics, excuse me, y'all, in the lyrics, it say, uh... I didn't know. Oh, I never knew I loved you till you were gone. So this is somebody that they was confused, okay? They was confused. I'll be reminded of this dream I had last night that I did not even, I didn't even type it in. I didn't save it. But in this dream, um, I was basically dating someone, okay? This is someone that I was dating in this dream. I did not, um... <clears throat> It did not go as far as uh, marriage or anything like that. But I was aware that this person was someone that um, I knew from my childhood. This is someone that, you know, a classmate. But the interesting thing is, as we were dating, I was genuine and I was like really putting forth an effort, but... 
they just kind of had this hesitant um, approach to everything. And eventually, they just blurted out, I don't believe that you are really into me. I don't believe that you really like me. And I was like, okay. And then I just stopped. Like, I was like, okay, well, I guess that's the end of it. Okay. Because, you know, I just feel like this is a situation where this person was... They never gave you a chance because they did not believe that you truly cared about them. Um, for some of you, they truly believed that you were going to break their heart. And because they truly believed that you were going to break their heart, they wanted to beat you to it. They wanted to break your heart first. And in reality, you know, the saddest thing about it is you were genuine. And they, even though they couldn't see it, but it's not, you know, it's not a situation where you should be trying to force them to see it. They were acting like a little child. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is somebody that was acting like they were a little child. I'm being reminded of another part. It's somebody that was acting like a little child that they just swinging they thing around, you know what I'm saying? Running around naked and running around just being free, acting a fool. And they knew deep down inside that they wanted to be with you, but they just could not get over. I guess they could not get over this. Like there was something within them that was telling them it wasn't real. Like this is somebody that felt like they were dreaming for real. And it's kind of like once you left, and once you completely cut things off, it gave them the opportunity to sit back and think about, dang, I think they was for real. And the reason I say that is because, you know, throughout your entire being with this person, throughout the entire time you were with this person, you didn't do anything to break their heart. You were really genuine. You were really putting forth effort to build a relationship with this person. But I'm just feeling like uh reciprocate like reciprocation. They did not receive you the way that they should have because they kept on holding on to this thought that you were going to break their heart and you were going to leave, which evidently in the end caused you to leave because you know it's one thing for you know someone to be scared to love but they are putting forth an effort. They are actually, you know, trying to build the relationship and, you know, like they tiptoeing in and somebody that is constantly telling themselves, they don't really love me. They don't really care about me. They not really going to be there for me. I'm going to do what I want to do because I don't believe this is real. I believe they plan with me. I believe they plan around with my emotions and I'm going to do what I want to do because I don't have time for this. And if it evidentially, obviously, you're going to leave because why would you stay? It, it's just like, I just feel like true logic out the window. Like, obviously, you're going to leave. Why would you stay and be treated such a way? And for some of you, they felt as though if you really loved them, you would allow them to treat you any kind of way. Why would you do that? Where they do that? Where? 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 Why would anybody... Just accept somebody um, stepping all over them and treating them any kind of way and doing them any kind of way and just doing what, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just feel like this person already knew the kind of person you were before y'all actually decided to be in a relationship. But from their point of view, they felt as though you were somebody they could never have. They felt as though you were somebody that would never want to be with them. And once you did decide that, okay, you're going to, you know, you're going to try to work it out with this person. They saw you as somebody that was playing with them. They saw it as a joke. They felt like um, it wasn't real. And for some of you, it's kind of like they may have fetishized. I don't know why I hear fetish. Like for some of you, this person fetish, like they fetishized you for a long time. A long time this person had, they would sit and they would daydream about being with you and they would dream about being with you and they would dream about um, y'all coming together and being together. Just like in the lyrics of the song, it says that, you know, you're so pretty and I wanted you to have my child and all this. This is somebody that really, like, they are infatuated with you and I feel like they may have even been praying for you for a long time. And God gave them exactly who they were praying for, and they were shocked. 
And, you know, I'm not saying this in a sense to say, you know, you should, you know, like, it's all good and dandy. Because in reality, you know, even in the song, like, the response is not, dang, I got to get right. I need to, I need to do better. It's not a... Oh, man, I need to, you know, please forgive me. I'm sorry. No, this song is saying I got to get up early in the morning and find me another lover. This is somebody that, they, they, they didn't, it's like they acknowledge what, the, like, they don't acknowledge what they did wrong. They don't at all in any shape, form, or fashion do they take out the time to realize maybe they shouldn't have cheated on you. If they wouldn't have cheated on you, y'all might still be together. If they wasn't starting fights with you over nothing, y'all might still be together. If they were actually seeking to, you know, accepting the fact that y'all had peace, y'all might still be together. For some of you, y'all, you came in and you brought this person a feeling of peace, a covering of peace that they haven't felt in a long time. And they were so confused and conflicted by the peace like it don't make sense for somebody to be conflicted by peace but this is somebody they were conflicted by peace they were like what is this what is this this is boring this is i don't like this and they were rejecting exactly what god was gifting them they prayed for it for all this time they get it and now they start rejecting it because it feels weird to them. It's not what they used to. They used to constantly fighting in uh relationships and constant arguments and constant mess and all kind of nonsense. And I just feel like for whoever this is for, you were like, you know, you had a countdown. You got one more time. You got two more times. You got three more times to do this here. And then it's done. Here's the thing. Um, when you left. They basically were kind of trying to put it off on you. You know what I'm saying? Just like I said, the whole time y'all were in a relationship, this person kept looking at you. And it's like they they felt as though they felt as though you were going to just shatter their heart. And um God is saying for somebody, they were more so in love with the idea of you than they were of you. You know what I'm saying? And I know that sounds weird, but there are some people that are like that. You know, when somebody um, holds somebody as their, like, this is their dream person. This is the person that they've dreamed of. And um, they're always like, how do I say it? I, I just feel like this is somebody that they possibly daydream a lot. And when they daydream, it's like they think of you. Like, you are the person they're dreaming of. But the personality behind you is not yours. And you in person, like the real life you, you are completely different from what they imagined you to be. And they may have imagined you to be toxic. They may have imagined you to be um, a certain kind of way that you're not. So when they got you in real life, it, it took them aback. Um, this is somebody that really made themselves to believe that you were... <clears throat> a, a different person for somebody they made themselves to believe that you were a heartbreaker you were gonna be cheating you were gonna be acting a fool for some of you this person it's like they had some kind of uh twisted notion when it came to you in one sense um they thought about you as the person that they always wanted to be with but you know there are some men that um when it comes to the woman of their dreams, and especially if they are feeling like they are not at the level where they would be able to receive the woman of their dreams, if they get her, they are going to assume that there's something she wants or that she has some kind of ulterior motive or that, you know, she's going to be doing them dirty on the side or that she's going to be cheating on them with the kind of person that deserves to be with her. And sometimes they'll get into this mindset of where if I want her to stay, I'm going to have to knock her down to be on my level. Whoever this is for, they kept trying to knock you down to their level and it was not working. It's kind of like it, it, you wasn't you wasn't having it. <clears throat> Whatever their level is in their mind, 
the level that they used to, you was like, it, it, it's something that you're just simply like, you're not going to do it. You're not going to do it. And, you know, if you're um confused or you're wondering what is that level, look at their exes. You know what I'm saying? If they are used to dating women that, you know, don't care about how they present themselves, if they are used to dating women that are sleazy and they sleep around with a lot of men, if they used to dating women that, you know, maybe abuse themselves, regardless if this comes from um, drug usage or it could be a situation where this person is used to someone that's always fighting and arguing. It's like, this is somebody, they wanted to knock you down to their level. And even when you think about it, if this person was cheating on you and they used to being with people that they cheat, they disappear and then they pop back up and all kind of stuff. That's what they wanted you to turn into. That's who they thought you were. You know, and it's a lot of men out here. I've so I've talked about it before. These men be undercover pimps, and you know what I'm saying? And you know, this man could have thought that you was gonna fit right in and you did not. And you know what I'm saying? This could have been an opportunity. God was trying to save this person, but they did not want to be saved. They did not want to turn away from their sin. They um God is saying they put all their ducks in one basket. They put all their eggs in one basket thinking that you were going to be the ultimate. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, this person looks at you and they think that you are all the way up here compared to them. And this is not how you see it. This is how they see it. And they were thinking you were going to attract men that's all the way up here. And, you know, if the, somebody has this pimp mindset, they thinking that you're going to be sleeping with all these rich men and you was going to be making all this money and that that's what you do. And especially if that's all they see. If that's all they surrounded by, if that's what they exes was doing, that's what all the homegirls up the street is doing, that's what family and friends is doing, that's what they think that women do, <clears throat> for real. That's how they, This is how this person perceives the world. For some of you, they was doing it themselves, okay? And, you know, in reality, they, you know, they have been trying to watch you and been trying to peep you and trying to see what it is that you got going on. And once they saw that wasn't it, you know, it bothered them. It made them frustrated. It made them angry. Sometimes when somebody has a perception of you and it's not factual, and then when they actually get around you and they start to see that the real you don't fit what the idea that they had of you is, it makes them angry. This person began, they became very angry. They became very frustrated. They became very combative because they were sitting around waiting for you to become a certain way that you simply were not going to become because that wasn't you. And no matter what they did or how they did it, or like it's like they kept trying to poke at you and bend your wheel. They could not get you to act this way because that wasn't you. I just feel like this is somebody where you would rather sit in a house with all the lights off and the water off and you about to get kicked out than to go and sell yourself. You know what I'm saying? And this person, like, they wasn't feeling it. They wasn't feeling it. They wasn't feeling it. They didn't like it. They didn't like it at all. They felt some kind of way about that. Um. Okay. Um. They were constantly rebelling. This is somebody, God kept speaking to them and letting them know that what they were doing was wrong. God kept speaking to them, letting them know that you are not the way that they assumed you to be. God kept speaking to them and letting them know they needed to turn away from their sinful ways and assuming that you were going to be the way that they wanted you to be instead of opening their eyes and, you know, actually getting to know you and appreciate the you that you were. And you know what I'm saying? Just like I said, eventually they came to the conclusion, this person cannot possibly want me. And they came to this conclusion because of one of two things. First of all, they realized that their perception of you was not true. And it could be a situation where they were thinking the only way that you would want them is if you had that going on. And you know what I'm saying? They were thinking, like a lot of these women, maybe their exes were using them for their services, using them for protection or using them because of who they know and using them because they can do this, that, and the third or whatever. And they were like, you know, okay, so... 
eventually they gonna want me to do these things and they saw that you wasn't no you wasn't down for that no you were never going to want them to do those things another thing about it is you know uh god is saying this person possibly was cheating on you especially if they had all that going on nine out of ten this person was cheating on you like uh you know not only with their exes but with other people that you may not have known about this is somebody that was completely acting a fool they were acting out you not only did you not receive the best version of this person you received the worst version you didn't even get the version of where they have grown to be and you didn't because they assumed that you didn't want them they saw you and they thought they already thought you were all the way up here and then on top of that, after getting to know the real you, they realized that you weren't even like what they thought you, they perceived you to be. They perceived you to be up here, but they still perceived you to be up here with some, you know, some sketchy uh, dealings. And then they realized that you wasn't, you ain't have no sketchy dealings. So that means that you higher than what they thought in the first place. They did not like that. They didn't like it. They didn't like it. They didn't like it. They didn't like it. And, you know, I think it's so interesting because God is speaking about how this is a situation where the person that is um, actually in line, in alignment with God is being rejected by the sinner. And, you know, sometimes people think that 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 don't even make sense. How can somebody that, you know, is they they down it out or they got whatever they got going on and they going through it you know what i'm saying they they um they live in a very sinful way they need to repent they acting a complete fool they you know what i'm saying how can somebody like that reject somebody that is literally living their life as closely knit to the way god wants them to as possible how could they reject somebody that's so perfect how why why would a man reject a woman that is um i'm sorry y'all my nose keep itching but how could a man reject a woman that is um that is faithful that is putting forth her effort to do everything that god says that pulls that you know that holds her part that you know walks closely with god that you know especially a man in that mindset that has that kind of mindset thinking that every woman is selling herself and you know what i'm saying <clears throat> you would think that a man would not want to actually settle down and be serious and, you know, in a serious relationship or even marry a woman that is literally selling herself to any and everybody for money. But you know what I'm saying? You'll be surprised. And I just feel like that's the thing. This is somebody that when somebody is living a life in a very sinful manner and they have this perception that it's okay because everybody does it. And then here you come and you don't do it. That you are basically messing with their perception. You not only are you messing with their perception, nine out of ten, if this person tried to talk about it around you, or they may have tried to assume that you was on that, or you know what I'm saying, in one way or another, you probably made uh, you know, scrunch your face up like I would never. You know what I'm saying? You may have, you know, like made them feel some kind of way. I'm being reminded of several messages that I received, I would say about a year ago about somebody wanting to like sell someone. And even if someone, you know what I'm saying? Just because somebody wants to sell you and somebody wants you to do certain things, that don't mean that you're going to be down for it. And for whoever this is for, you wasn't down for it. You, you don't get down like that. That's not your, that's not your thing. You are not the kind of person where you are willing to go and sleep with whoever just to, so you can have a few dollars in your pocket. You will wait on God. And, you know, even with that, this person also saw how God blessed you because you refused to do what they wanted you to. You refused to turn into like you. you it, it, I just feel like it wasn't even a thought in your mind that you could go and do that. It wasn't even a thought in your mind that that would be a good idea. And because of this, God continuously blessed you. Because of this, God continued. Like, I just feel like somebody, God was just shining his light up on you. Okay? And um, even if this person tried to put you in situations where you may have been tempted or they may have been trying to do this on a slick, 
Um, like God, I just feel like you had angels surrounding you. Whoo! Not here, not here, not here, not here. Now that you are no longer with this person, this person is at a position to where they are feeling like, you know, they, they looking at it as if you were the one that did wrong. Once again, this is somebody that's used to this here. They are used. Everybody do it. Everybody do it. Every It's okay because everybody do it. And you know what I'm saying? They are basically looking at you as if you are bad. And everybody else is good. And you know we live in a world right now. If you listen to the modern rap music. And as somebody that used to. I used to go hard for rap music back in the day. Female rap rappers. I used to love female rappers. When I was in high school. And a young adult. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. Now. Mm -mm. Baby. Baby. I, I can't. I can't. They make it seem like it's cool to be a prostitute. And now I'm just going to say it, that tell the truth and shame the devil. They make it seem like it's cute to be a thot, to be a whore. They like, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, y'all. That's going to close your ears. Close your ears. I'm sorry. But it's the truth. They make it seem like it's cute to do these things. They make it seem like when you are upholding yourself, you're celibate. You're not giving your, 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 your goods away. And you're not walking around with your hand out to any and every man that looks at you or, you know, winks at you that you are lame. Baby, I don't got time. I don't got time. You know what I'm saying? If that's what you want to do, boo, do your thing. But I'm just going to be real as far as me. I'm not I'm not busting it open for nobody. Uh, like, unless that I'm married to them. I, and that's, the, that's, just the, that's just the end of it. And I for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure, ain't finna go around and, you know, trying to sell myself for no, 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 no. But we live in a time. Well, what is bad is looked at as what is good. And what is good is looked at as what is bad. And I just feel like for whoever this is for, you were one of a kind. And you were literally surrounded, regardless if you realize it or not, by people that were doing what was wrong in the eyes of God. And this person eventually they started to look at you as if you were bad and you were wrong and you were the one that was causing problems. Maybe you were, you know what, very vocal about you not doing it. You know what I'm saying? And it's not to say that you were talking down on the women that were, but you were very vocal about that's not your thing. You not going to do it. And you know what I'm saying? Maybe you were also very vocal about you not sharing. You know what I'm saying? There are some women that they okay if they person cheat on them and they okay if they step out every now and again some people are okay with uh sharing a house with the mistress baby i'm not i says the cat not i says no we're not gonna do that no we're not gonna do that no 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 oh we're not gonna do that we're not gonna do that because that's like that that's a whole different ball game that opens a whole different door of demons because first of all First of all, I, like, first of all, you are basically telling your spouse that is you are okay with sharing them. Not only, it, and it's, it's it, like, this is different from just saying that, you know, you, you overlook if they cheat every now and again. This is you being okay if they decide that they're going to cheat today, tomorrow. This is basically a sister-wife situation. And they choose which bed they're going to sleep in tonight. And they choose who they're going to give more attention to and who they not. And they choose who they, ain't nobody got time for that. If you married to me, it's me and that's it. I'm not hearing that other stuff. And I'm just being real. And that's just how, you know what I'm saying? We're going to draw a line right there. Nah, you, no, no, no. As far as I'm concerned, you ain't going to nobody else big. Like, no, we ain't got time for that. And then, like, you know, to keep it going, this is dangerous. Because we already know a lot of times these mistresses and these misters be getting all up in their feelings. And they will take you up out of here behind somebody that don't even belong to them. With that being said, whoever this is for, like, once everything hit the fan, this person looked around and they decided that you were the blame for everything that they caused to happen. You, it was your fault. 
Because how dare you say that you don't do that? And how dare you say that they was wrong for what they was doing? And how dare... And you have to think about it. This is something that somebody, all their friends, all their family, everybody they know of does this. And you're basically telling them that it's wrong. Like, this is kind of like a Sodom and Gomorrah type vibe. And you were telling this person basically everything, their livelihood, their everything was wrong. It's like you basically turned their world upside down. And you may have been a dream. And they may have dreamed about you for years. And they may have always assumed that you was this way. But now that they see that you're not that way. And you come through with the fire. The Holy Ghost fire. And you telling them that all this sin that you got going on. I just feel like this is somebody came through with a cross. Like, oh no, this is sin everywhere. Rebuking demons left and right. They didn't even understand what was going on. But God said. God said they refuse to repent. No one repent. I listen closely. They speak what is not true. Like I said to somebody that believes that what is wrong is right and what's right is wrong. This person may have been for somebody. God is speaking to me saying that they were plotting against you. They wanted to take you up out of here because who do you think you are to tell them what they have thought to be right for their whole life was wrong. It says it clearly in this Bible over and over again. It says it in any Bible. Any version of the Bible you pick up, God speaks against prostitution. God speaks against fornication. God speaks against same-sex uh, activities. God speaks against adultery. But there are some people walking around this earth having the audacity to call themselves Christian while simultaneously living their lives in a way that they know good and well God is against it. No one repents of his wickedness saying, what have I done? So this is somebody that does not feel guilty about what they're doing. And they do they are, this is like what they're doing is 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 against God completely. We we already know this is a um this is abomination. Thank you, Lord. This is an abomination to God, what they got going on, what they're trying to have going on. And for somebody, you came there because God was answering this person's prayer. And they may have been feeling like God wasn't real because God wasn't answering their prayer. In reality, they wasn't even ready for you. They were not ready for you. They were ready for the thought of you, their idea of you, what they assumed you to be. This person may be going out trying to find somebody that looks like you, but acts the way that they want you to, they wanted you to act. God said they ain't going to find that. God will put forth every effort to ensure that they don't find it. And in reality, you know what I'm saying? This person, they going about and they assume that they did no wrong. They assume that they were right. Once again, this is somebody, everybody around them, without you being there, everybody around them is telling them that what's going on is correct. And it's not. And it's not. You know what I'm saying? I rebuke that in Jesus' name. More than kabaka isho komo siye like be my si. O komo si mokuri siye abasha baka mo so vore le bale mi na iso ye. Mmm. I rebuke it, but God says that that's what this person really thinks in their heart, in their heart, with their whole chest, in their whole chest. Why do these people rebel with obstinate resistance? This is somebody, they feel that strongly, deep in their chest. They feel like there's nothing wrong with what they're doing. No one repents. Some are, like To such an extent, no one repents. They speak what is not true. This is somebody that really feels like with their whole chest that what they got going on is okay. Mm. Baby. God say everything, even the stork in the air knows its seasons, turtle dove. And, you know, but the my people do not know the ordinance of the Lord. God is saying that he looks on at this with shock and appallment that, you know, they, they, they really are confused about what God is okay with. And this may very well be somebody that claims to be a child of God, claims to be a child of Judah or a child of Israel, and they walking around acting a complete fool. God said he is not for it. He is not okay with what they're doing. And if you're watching, he is not okay with what you're doing, says the Lord. You thought, I don't know why you thought, but you thought. You know what I'm saying? I know there are a lot of people that come on here and they go other places and they preach about, you know, the other things in the Bible. And there's nothing wrong with preaching about um, 
fertility and blessings and, you know, preaching about the goodness of God. But when it comes down to it, if you are not repenting of your sin and you are carrying on living in a sinful manner and you think that God is going to bless that mess, you crazy. You crazy. If you really think that God is okay with you just living a life and being very sinful like this here. Uh-uh. Therefore, I will give their, I'm going down to 10. I will give their wives to strangers, their fields to spoilers, small and great alike. All are greedy for gain. Prophet and priests all practice fraud. They will repair as though it is not the injury uh, to the daughter of my people. Peace, peace, they say, but there is no peace. God said he is sticking his entire foot down on all these people. All these people, this person and the people surrounded them. Talking about that God told them it was okay. And God told them it was all right. And God showed them to the story about the woman. I know that there's a story in the a, in a, in a Bible about the woman that was a prostitute and she helped. But guess what? She was uh, ordered by God to stop being a prostitute. She quit. She was no longer sinning. You cannot expect that God is going to want you to carry on doing what you're doing. God ordered somebody to marry her. And when she was married, she was clean. She was no longer sleeping around with men for money. That was done. You cannot think that that's what God is okay with. And I already talked to y'all about how I sat through somebody uh, that, 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 that was preaching. I was at somebody else's church and somebody was preaching the word, at their word. And they were talking about how God is okay with prostitutes. No, he is not. No, he is not. No, he is not. He is not. Yes, God can use anybody. And he did use her for that time. But after he was done using her for what he needed to use her for, she was a spy for the Lord. After he was done, she was married to a godly man. And she left that sinful life behind. Not only was she saved, but her entire family was saved. Now, this is somebody, maybe God intended for them to be saved. Maybe God intended for their entire family to be saved. But instead of them listening to what you said, instead of them taking to heart what you had to say, instead of them paying attention to the scripture in the Bible, any Bible, they ignored it. I'm being reminded of a video I saw of a pastor in the church throwing chocolate syrup all over the Bible and pouring out food all over the walls and singing a gospel song while completely just doing everything in his power to destroy the altar and destroy the church. And all I saw was a demon acting like he was a pastor. And I, I'm just being real. Like God is saying, there are so many people that you know they 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 twist and they turn and they make things out to be the way they want it to be and you know what i'm saying this may whoever this person is they may have been getting the okay from people there may have been pastors or prophets that were telling them that it's okay and no you can go ahead and you can keep on doing it and no god is not mad with you god said they was lying through their teeth tell the truth and shame the devil god is not okay with it period Period. But like I said, this is somebody that is completely surrounded by people that are living a life of sin. And because they are completely surrounded by people that are living a life of sin, they think it's okay. It is everywhere. It is everywhere in their neighborhood. All their friends and family are into it. It's in the music. It's in the TV. They think that that's how life is supposed to be. God is speaking through me. I, and I, I, early, 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 early today, y'all. Woo, we are about 40 minutes in. God say, there will be no peace. There's somebody that's thinking early in the morning, and I'm going to find me another lover. God said, no, they not. No, they not. No, they not. No, they not, says the Lord. No, they not, says, therefore, I will give their wives to strangers. First of all, this person is going to be bothered, frustrated, and upset because the person that they've been dreaming about, the person they always wanted to be with, the person that they saw as the love of their life is going to be given away to somebody else. And their heart is going, they're, like, this is going to bother them. And they're going to see it. 
They are going to see it, says the Lord. They are going to see it. This is not going to be a situation where they, you know what I'm saying? Some people's out of sight, out of mind. Uh-uh. God said they're going to see this one. They're going to see this one. Regardless as to how they see it, they're going to see it. And it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. Their fields to spoilers. You know what I'm saying? This person is going to lose a lot. They're like all that they have gained, they are going to lose it. They are odious. They have done abominable things, yet they are not at all ashamed. They know not how to blush. God is saying this is somebody, once again, they are not ashamed of the evil they partake in. They're not ashamed of what they got going on. They think that it's okay. Hence, they shall be among those who fall. In their time of punishment, they shall go down, says the Lord. God is saying this is somebody, they are going down. And it's going to be at God's hand at God's hand. And for a lot of you, as they are falling down, as they are going down, regardless, some of you, um, for some of you, this person not even going to realize that they are going down, but they're going down. And what do I mean by this? You know what I'm saying? I'm, um, what I'm seeing is somebody that could possibly end up getting hooked up on drugs or somebody, you know, when somebody is on drugs, you know, real bad, it's kind of like they in a la-la land. They cannot, the world at, that they perceive is not what reality is. And, you know, it's kind of like there are going to be certain things that is going to click and make this person hit into reality. And for some of you, it may very well be seeing you with your person with whoever it is, God is going to send you and, you know, doing, living your life and doing your thing. And you know what I'm saying? You're going to be living life a certain way. And they are going to take out the time to perceive and look at what you got going on compared to what they got going on. And they're going to realize that they are under God's wrath. For some, it's, it, it may not be that. It may be something else. But this is a situation where this person is going to go down. They may very well already be going down. It may be a situation God already been working on them. God already had his foot on their back, on their neck because of what they are doing. But God says, their time of punishment, they will go down. They will be among those that are going to fall. They have no shame in what they're doing. They insist on not repenting from what they're doing. They insist on feeling like, oh, they left. Oh, they left. I know I'm the reason that they left, but oh, well, too bad. Let me go and find somebody that I actually mixed with. The person that they see themselves with, the person that they believe that is actually on their level may very well be somebody that's going to lead them into a life of, um, sin, a life of torment, and a life of drug abuse. Um, Y'all already know I watch a lot of documentaries. I, I watch a lot of, you know, I do. And I was watching one where the guy was going around to drug addicts and asking him, asking them, how did they get hooked on it? A lot of them said they were dating someone that was um into whatever it is that they had going on. And they started it because they were dating this person. And, you know, I'm like, for somebody, I see that this person is going to end up uh, messing with some stuff that's going to be too much. And, you know, they're not going to see it as too much. they going to, you know, and they're going to be in a, a a stage of continuously chasing after get that stuff that mm, it's going to bring them down. I will gather them all in, says the Lord. No grapes on the vine, no figs on the fig trees. Foliage withered. Why do we remain here? Let us form ranks and enter the walled cities to perish there. For the Lord has brought our destruction. He has given us poison to drink because we have sinned against the Lord. We wait for peace to no avail for a time of healing. But Sarah comes and said, God said, this, this is somebody that I, I just feel like, and for somebody, this is what they wanted for you. 
They wanted you to endure this. They wanted you to go through this. And you may have realized it or you may have not. But this is somebody, like like I said, they wanted you to do what they thought was okay. And they wanted you to fit in with everybody. You fit in with everybody may have been you ended up on drugs that you ain't want to be on. It, it may have ended up, it may have looked like you being strung out somewhere. It may have looked like you selling yourself to somebody you don't even know. It may have looked like, you know what I'm saying? All kind of awful things happening to you and you going on a downward spiral that was unnecessary and uncalled for. But whoever this is for, because you cling to God and you cling to his word and you rebuke anything that is outside what his word says, you were not listening to what they had going on. You was not worried about what they were saying. They like, you know what I'm saying? I just feel like they may have tried to make you feel as though it would be better for you to do what they was talking about than for you to do whatever it is God was leading you to do. But God says what you were doing was not a sin. What they wanted you to do was a sin. Not It was a sin. It was a sin against God's commands. It was a sin against God's rules. It was a sin against God. God said he did not want you partaking in that stuff. And th therefore, you did not. But those that insist on doing so. And you know what I'm saying? There may have been some, you know what I'm saying? This person and all the people they, they, that they are surrounded with. It's a downward spiral. And that's just the truth. Violence upon violence, deceit upon deceit. They refuse to recognize me, says the Lord. This is somebody that insists on doing evil in the eyes of God and claims that it's okay. Now, here's the thing. We already know it's a difference between somebody that is sinning and they have no idea that what they're doing is wrong and somebody that is sinning and God sends you to tell them, hey, what you're doing is wrong. You should repent of that. And either they choose to stop and repent and they're saved or they choose to keep going and they refuse to repent, but it's on them now. God says, this is not on you. This is not on you. This don't have nothing. You, you did your part. And for some of you, even, you know, your part literally may have been God leading you to this person. And you know what I'm saying? Leading you in, making you blend in. You were undercover as this person's spouse. You were undercover to as a, a friend or whatever it is that you were undercover to be. And you went in there. You saw what they had going on. They told you that it was okay. And you showed them scriptures where it said that it wasn't. And you told, like, for somebody, I feel like you over and over, God sent you several scriptures to go to, several stories, several messages where you debunked every false prophet, every false preacher that they ran into, making them believe that it was okay for them to carry on doing and partaking in the sin that they were doing. You let them know it is not okay with God. And what you're doing is going to lead you straight to hell. What you're doing is going to make you an enemy of God. They didn't want to hear that. They carried on doing it. And guess what? Their blood will not be on your hands, says the Lord. You already did your part. And you don't have to bend over backwards and chase after nobody and beg and plead with nobody to do what is right. You know what I'm saying? And God is not going to put you in a position to where you are constantly trying to beg this person to repent. And you're constantly trying to beg this person to do right. And you're constantly trying to beg this person, this, that, and the third. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a difference. And I'm being reminded of the message I received yesterday. It's the difference between somebody that they act right every now and again and somebody that they just refuse. You know what I'm saying? And they refuse. And it could even be a situation, you know, time change. Everything changes. Everything changes. It's constant change. Change is the only thing that's constant. Maybe God wanted you to go back and be with that person, but that person said to themselves, hold on, let me go to the scripture. Hold on, hold on. I listen closely. They speak what is not true. No one repents of his wickedness saying, what have I done? Everyone keeps on running his course like a steed dashing into battle. God said it could be a situation where you were supposed to go and help this person, but they are basically telling God that they refuse to change. And that they don't want to change. And they're not going to change. And it's nothing that God can do to make them change. They basically are putting forth an effort to rebuke God. God has rebuked them. God has turned his back on them. 
And that's what they're going to get. And they're going to feel that immediately. They can get up early in the morning and find whoever they feel like they're going to find, baby. They're going to get up early in the morning. They're going to find every demon, every dark, depressing spirit. Baby, God said this person is about to be drugged through the ringer. And it is because of what they said and what they did. You better watch what you, you better be careful. You better be careful. You better be careful. You better be careful. Uh, sit around doing blasphemy. Okay. Speaking blasphemy to God. This is somebody, God said he has turned his back on them. And you ain't got to go over there and do nothing. You you don't have to, like, this is it's not a situation where God is going to force you. God is not forcing you to go and be somebody's punching bag or to go and be, you know what I'm saying, just abused and misunderstood. And they just assuming that you are just the big bad wolf because you're trying to steer them to go right. You want to steer them the correct path. They're they supposed to be going the correct way and they insist on doing wrong in the eyes of God. God said, let them at it then. Let them at it then. Since they insist, they insist, let them at it. You know what I'm saying? Leave them to it. God said they want to run themselves into a downward spiral. Leave them to it. I'm just being reminded, you know how when somebody is constantly being mean to you and constantly picking on you and constantly harassing you and bullying you, and then they get shocked when you are like, you know what? I don't like such and such. And they're like, why don't you like me? Why don't you, why don't you want to be my friend? Why you don't want to hang out with me? What did you assume? That's just like this person, you know, constantly taking all these drugs and constantly uh, partaking in all these sinful activities and constantly chasing after these sinful people and wanting to hang around people that don't want to do nothing but evil. When something evil and wicked happens to them, God said he's not trying to hear it. That part. That period. When they end up in a situation where they 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 feel like the you know somebody that put something in a drink or somebody that laced up something they was they had going on or this happened that God said he ain't trying to hear that because he warned them he sent you to warn them and they rejected you they rejected God and now they have chosen to go down that path so that's the path they're going down God says what they wanted to do that's what they wanted. And regardless to what the outcome is, that's what they wanted their outcome to be. And God is saying, for some of you, you may end up uh, receiving a call, a message, or whatever, telling you that something happened to this person. But that is what they chose. They chose that path. And they chose it as soon as they told God, they don't care what he got to say about it. They're going to do what they want to do. And they're going to lay down with whoever they want to lay down with. And they're going to have whatever as a profession that they want because it's easy or because it's fun or because of this, that, and the third. God said, okay, you got it. We got free will. We got free will. We got free will to do whatever we want to. And especially when somebody has already been warned, God then already, you know what I'm saying? They already were warned. They were warned already. God already let them know what they was doing was wrong. God already let them know that they needed to turn away. God already let them know they going down the downward spiral. They insisted on going that way. God said, okay. That's the message, y'all, baby. This message is, is dang near an hour long. Lord have mercy. But that's the message. God said that's what they chose. That's what they wanted. So what, what, what? You know what I'm saying? This other love that they going to search for, baby, a, a devil. This other love they going to search for is a demon. And baby, they going to find it. Yeah, they going to find it. They going to find it. Yeah, baby, they going to find it. They going to find it. They going to find what they looking for. Okay? They going to find what they looking for. Just like in that movie, uh, you got what you wanted, but did you get what you need? Okay, baby, they going to find what they looking for. They going to find what they looking for. They going to find it all right. That's the message. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Deuces.